Welcome back to another episode of Blue Collar Happy Hour. Today we have none other than the Braxton Wolf, tow truck operator extraordinaire. Braxton, how's it going today? Good. Thank you guys for having me. Thanks for coming on, dude. We appreciate it. Uh, Braxton's been in the comments of some of the YouTube videos. I didn't even know that you were a tow truck driver until oh, yeah. until you told us, obviously. So you're, you're distant cousins of Tyler's. I said, hey, Tyler, we're thinking about having Braxton this guy on what do you think and he's like oh dude i follow him on tiktok he he is an electric tow truck operator it'd be a great episode so braxton how long have you been a tow truck operator i started doing it part-time when i was 18 full-time when i was 19 so going on about seven years now damn you got that that's experience great. well so what is that like as a as a younger kid like getting in on a market that's like or on a job that i guess is normally to be considered as like rough and tumble guys, For right? sure. I was known as the kid on the job sites yeah. for a while. So is it ever intimidating? Because I, I like, you see these shows that was, that's like the tow truck shows on. <laughs> like South Beach Tow. Yeah, yeah South Beach Tow. Yeah. I couldn't think of it. South Beach Tow, where these people are coming out just like screaming at you, towing their vehicles, breaking stuff, like, is that ever intimidating for you as the younger guy dealing with some of this Not stuff? Not really. I mean, I have had situations where, like you said, people will come run, running out of a house screaming, why are you towing my car? Yeah. And a lot of it's like winter parking, stuff like that. Yeah. It's on them. It's not our it's, fault. It's got to be weird for you, you know, Just it's just your job. You know, it's just another day in the life. And to this person, that's the worst thing that could oh, happen to them. worst day of their life. So well, like we're that, just, I'm just doing my job. Yeah, that that's just a wild thing to think. Because I like got... At my job, nobody, there's never an opportunity for someone to come scream at me. Like, that's just never going to happen. Right. Yeah. And it's something I don't appreciate. Or it's rare. It's rare. It's not that it doesn't happen. Yeah. Like, it's not that it never would happen, but it's rare. Whereas, like, in your line of work, that is like, it seems to be that's a normal thing. Can, can you think of a yes scenario no. that, like, the worst, the worst thing that's happened? from someone that you're trying to tow their vehicle? Can you think of a scenario that really stands out to you? Not really. I mean, we do tow a lot with, like, law enforcement. So usually when people oh. are getting arrested, they're not in the best spirits and they're not very happy. Yeah. So that's usually when we run into some. So what would be a scenario where you have to tow their car with law enforcement, like a DUI, yeah, like quite that? A, yeah, I would say that's cut down in the last. I mean, I've done it for seven years now. Those aren't very common. They are, okay. yes and no. But a big one was for no insurance. Really? really? Yeah, that's Where, a like, huge one. Okay, so they get pulled over. They don't have insurance. You got to tow the vehicle. Yeah. Because they can't drive it. I know there's statues now where they have to let the vehicle sit for so many hours until they tow it, but that was a huge one. Dang. You'd be surprised how many people do not have insurance. That's crazy. So we've, I mean, we've had a hell of a winter here in Minnesota. Oh. I mean, some places reporting over 100 inches of snow. I would imagine, what was this winter like for you? Never ending. Oh, I would imagine, dude. Yeah. How many, how many times do you think you got called out to pull someone out of the snow that's stuck hundreds really hundred easy oh, yeah. dude yeah it's been just an absolute wild winter so um let's go back to tiktok here you just posted a video last week that got oh, like five million views is that right now last sure. i checked before we started recording yep and give us a rundown of what what it is it's uh you you picked up an electric vehicle that a Tesla. Okay. Yeah, I picked up an electric vehicle, uh, towed it two miles to the charge station. So that's what happened was the driver refused to listen to the warning lights. It said vehicle will shut down in so long. Broke down. She's sitting on the side of the road. I had to tow it two miles. And when I called her on my way there, she actually said, I have a meeting to get to. So if you can expedite this, you know, <laughs> so she's already pretty demanding. And it, All right. So I made good time there. Get her towed to the charging station. And yeah, and then it's like it's like ironic because you're towing an electric vehicle. Absolutely, and here's the big catch with a combustion motor. So once we get there to the charging station, back it right up to the charger for her, and then she's asking me, "What am I supposed to do?" Because it has no power to get the little cap open where you put plug the charger. <sighs> oh my god! And I said, "I'm not a technician. You know, I'm a tow truck driver. Yeah. I got you to where you needed to be. I'm out of here." I clear. She tries calling me five <laughs> different times. Reject. I have other calls to go on. You know, I'm not wasting my time right. with this. Got places to be. Well, then another come call comes through for a jump start on a Tesla. How does that work? I can don't you, know. Can you even <laughs> jump start a Tesla? I'm not sure. Sent that call away. I, I nothing I can do to help her. 
She's oh at the charging goodness. station. She's gonna have to call like headquarters. So what do you what do you think of this whole wave of electric versus gas combustion engines? And uh, so where, where do you sit on this thing? I'm not totally opposed to electric vehicles. I think there's a purpose for them. If you're doing short commutes, you live in the metro area. I don't foresee them being a bad thing. But if you live rural or out in the country here, where you're commuting even 20 to 30 miles each way, I don't think they're a good idea yeah, it, whatsoever just not made for us absolutely you know? not unless they have a charger station where every gas station is i don't see it being feasible right well i mean you get into that whole bag of worms it's like the materials it takes to build all these big ass batteries on top of this now like they're just expensive dude there's oh. not a brand new electric vehicle that's reasonable for a normal person to buy and they're a fire hazard we have had a few electric vehicles and crashes and there's actually a warning that they can relight back on fire like i've heard that. hours later wow yeah. that's insane yeah so they, they burn forever you get it out and it'll just boom it pops back up because it's they so can, hot or what's the deal with I that think the battery materials that start reacting to themselves Dude, that's insane yeah. so um what would you say is the most towed vehicle that you pick up is there one you see like <laughs> you see like a dodge journey you're like yep i know that's the yeah, 10th one i've seen this year yeah right? i would say our number one money maker in the towing business not being biased is fords really yeah, yeah. yeah we do tow a lot of fords Really? Keeps us, yeah. Like in specifically F one fifties or like trucks, just anything. A little bit of everything, yeah. Absolutely. That is hilarious. Ford guys are gonna be in the comments just absolutely lighting <laughs> well, me up right now. I mean, they'll say, say, Oh, there's so many on the roads, that's why you're towing them on. It's like, nah. <laughs> that's not a bad argument, but I my whole life I've heard this saying it's like, Oh, you hear Ford got that new heated back bumper or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Keeps your hands warm when you're pushing it. I'm like, Fuck, maybe it's true. Found, found honestly, on road dead. though, I would say the newer stuff is worse than any older vehicle. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, you get into this whole thing where it's like all this new stuff, there's just a lot more electronics, a lot more to go wrong. What do you think the the car market's going to be in the next 20 years? Because like the, the vehicles we're seeing that are starting to break down now is, you know, five, 10 year old vehicles. What do you think in the next five to 10 years is going to be the most common thing on the road? You think it's going to be just electric vehicles in general? Or what do you think? I can't see electric vehicles being the main source of transportation for another 30 to 40 years yeah i suppose easily no that makes total it's gonna sense. have to come a long ways before oh for sure for, plus people love they love their gas engines yeah like, I, I know people that would rather die than switch to an electric <laughs> yeah. vehicle. oh absolutely there's no way i mean it, it'll have to be a, a generational gap because there's plenty of people our age i know that just refuse to even be around electric oh, yeah. vehicles just because of like the, you know, the taboo surrounding them. Sure. It's kind of become like a political thing, which is kind of weird, you know, a little bit. Yeah. It's really strange. So now walk us through the process of like, you get a call for, let's say someone got a DUI. Sure. And you, how does that phone call go? And what do you do start to finish of picking this vehicle up and where do you bring it? Uh, typically, so either state patrol or the, or the sheriff's office, they will call us. They'll give us a cross street of where the vehicle is located. They usually give us a description of the vehicle. You get there, um, get the paperwork from the officer, hook up the vehicle, bring it back to our impound lot. And then usually next day or whenever the person gets released out of jail, they'll come grab their vehicle. That's wild. Yeah. So um, now... As someone who's had their vehicle impounded before, is there multiple impound lots that you bring them to, or is just one? Are we, you guys involved with the impound lot? Yeah. Like, you oh, own the impound lot? Yeah, it's on our the, Got it. the tow company's property. Okay, yep. so I never knew if that was, like, a separate company. That's a good question, dude. I because honestly didn't I know, know in either. the So, in the cities, they do have, like... Separate lots. Separate lots. Like, the city of Minneapolis has their own impound Got lot. Got it. Yep. Well, I would imagine that's where a lot of the money is being made. For sure. Because when I went, so I got a parking ticket um, at, when I lived in Grand Forks. It was just like a certain street that you couldn't park on certain mm -hmm. days. Really confusing kind of thing. And I just didn't know. They tow your car? Yeah, they did. Oh, and I'll just, all of a sudden I wake up and I'm like, where the hell is my car? It's right in front of my house. And I didn't know my, my street was like that. So they just towed it. Yep. And I was like. Where the hell is my car? <laughs> I had no idea. I thought it maybe had got stolen, actually. <laughs> That's what I would assume first. Right. And so I called the impound lot, and sure enough, it was there. So I had to pay like 287 bucks to go get that thing out of impound. Is there, how do they determine what the cost is for the it's impound company fee? company to company. 
Okay. I would say once you go towards the cities, it gets more expensive. Is it standard? Like every vehicle you come to get out of impound is this price? Or does it depend on what the vehicle it's is? It's usually a flat rate. Yep. Okay. I mean, unless it's like a big semi that we tow in, then yeah. it's obviously additional fees. Interesting. It takes up more space. Now, when, you, when you're going to hook up to this stuff, I've always wondered, like, if there's no keys in it, if it's an automatic transmission, yep. how do you pull these things? So that's, there's two styles of tow trucks. You have your regular wreckers, which is like your regular tow truck, and then your flatbeds, which you see a lot of. I prefer running a wrecker, which is easier, I would say, but it's also, you got to be more careful because there's a lot more stuff to wreck. Okay. No pun as far intended. As, well, no, um, a lot more newer vehicles are all-wheel drive. Yeah. So then you can't just tow them with two wheels off the ground because yep. you'll blow the transfer case and the transmission off. So how do you how do you move them? Like, is so, there something that you have to do to be able to get the wheels to spin free, or what do you do? With the flatbed, you can get away with just dragging it up and park if you don't have keys really? for it. Yeah, just straight have, up, just... Yeah, <laughs> or we have, like, these chocks or skates we'll put under yeah. the wheels. But with the wrecker, we actually have these dollies that we'll put under the rear wheels, and that lifts them off, so it's basically like having it on a flatbed. You ever, you ever broken something on a car when you're trying to hook up to it? Uh, you oh, you took my question. Yeah, there was one time I towed a Volkswagen Beetle from like North Branch, way up north, like 100 miles. It went over some big construction bumps along the way, and I actually oh. broke the oil pan. No Busted way. Busted a hole in the oil pan, yeah. So by the time you get it to where you're going, yeah, there's no oil in it? I got it to the mechanic shop, and we back it into the spot, and he's looking underneath, and I can see oil slowly dripping, oh. and I'm like, oh, fuck. So who's got to pay for that? Do you guys got to cover I, that? I paid for it. Yeah. Oh. Really? So it falls on you? As yeah, it can't. It all depends. I mean, if it's something that's out of the driver's. Yep. But this was more like I, I knew I shouldn't have towed it how I did it. Because with wreckers, that's the one yeah. vehicle you're not supposed to because the oil pan sits so low. And I risked it. I had a few big yep. bumps. And so you, you understood the risk. A few hundred dollars loss. Off. But yeah. <laughs> so I, what I'm kind of curious is, is what are the hours of a tow truck driver like, like, you know, obviously people aren't breaking down in the normal business hours. People are breaking down any, any time of night, any, any time in the morning. When, like, when do you work? How, Super how do you Super unpredictable. That Super unpredictable. That's the thing. It's always, it's, you don't get to choose your own hours. It's whenever someone, like you said, their vehicle breaks down. Yep. So it could be two in the morning, four in the morning. Are so, you just always on call? Yeah. It's usually, well, I have Oof. my... 10 hour shift during the daytime where I'm on the clock. And then anything I do after that would be considered a commission or after hours. So it's a little more worth your time. Yeah. You, know, you got to get out of bed, you know, you're getting that little extra ching. That's the one thing to make good money in the towing business. I would say you got to be willing to put in the work and the hours. Yeah. It's a lot so of work. Is it ever tough where like you start getting into some beers and you're like, I'm just not going to answer my phone or, or what do you That's do? That's the one thing I can't do that. When I'm on call, you can't drink, you can't go out to the bars, yeah. you can't go out of the area. You got to kind of stay within that 20 mile radius. Yep. So I've yeah. missed out on a lot of events. <laughs> that would not that would not be the best if you got a call from state patrol and they're sure. like, "Hey, we need you to <laughs> yeah. tow this guy out." You're yeah. sitting at the local bar. Yeah. Like, All right, I'll be there. Yeah, right. you would show up to good. show up to haul a guy's car with a DUI and you're hammered yourself. <laughs> would not be good. <laughs> I would imagine. Yeah. Like, I can't believe this bastard was driving drunk. <laughs> Take him in. You, yeah. you, uh, you idiot. <laughs> That's, That's the funny. worst, too. When you go to a DWI tow and the people have actually puked inside the car. Oh. Uh, yeah. Usually the trooper will say, yeah, yeah you don't, might not want to go in there. I won't touch it. And do you just drag one of the, That's <laughs> a drag. That's when on. I'll either put it on dollies or drag it up a flatbed. <laughs> That's hilarious. Not going in it. So when I think towing, I think like obviously my number one reason because of shows like South Beach Towing is like, um, what's it called? Where you don't make repo? your payment. Repo. Repossession. Yeah. See, repossessions. That, do you do any of those? We don't. That's the one thing we don't do is repossessions, but we do private property towing, okay. which is very similar. So basically a private or a property owner of like a apartment complex will call and say, we need these many vehicles moved for snow plowing. Yep. So what happens with when that, like if... Is there some sort of a rule where if they come out and they're like within X amount of space of the vehicle, they get to just keep it? Or That's how thing. does that work? Typically, if we already have the truck or the vehicle hooked up to the truck, we'll charge them a drop fee, yep. which is usually substantially That's cheaper. Fair. Oh, yeah. Let's say 50 bucks or something like that. Very yeah. way cheaper than towing it to our yard yeah. and getting it for a couple hundred bucks later. Right. But yeah, we'll charge them a lower drop fee. You ever have somebody be like, dude, if you drop my car right now, I'll get I'll give you 200 bucks, you know, or try to bribe you. I've to had people try, bri try bribing me with, yeah, anything. I mean, drugs, 
alcohol, really? stuff like that. Dude, I'll give you a beer. Come on. And that's another thing. It's going to come back to bite you one way or another. So you're not, it's not worth taking that. Right. Yeah. No, right. for that little Because then they reward. could go online and say, oh, this tow truck driver took this whatever for a bribe. Yeah. Yeah. Then that, that's bad luck. That Absolutely. is bad luck. That's it looks a very, very luck. it's, this looks very bad as well. Yeah. A hundred percent. So now in the situation, like you broke that oil pan, um, I'm thinking like a lot of these newer vehicles, the front, I mean, there's nothing to hook up to. Like, what are you hooking up to? Because, uh, so I've, I've done a lot of snow plowing this sure. year when I'm, when I like see someone stuck, like obviously I'll try to pull them out whenever I can. There's some vehicles like, I just, I'm like, I'm sorry. I just can't pull you out. I have nothing to hook up to here. I'm going to break something. That's my, the biggest secrets. The towing game is everyone says that is where do you hook to? Cause everyone knows older vehicles. You can hook to a bumper right. hook underneath. There's spots everywhere. These new vehicles, there's nowhere to hook. It's to. all plastic. Yeah. So we have these rim slings. They're like uh, straps that go right through the rim. Actually. Yeah. And you hook through a spoke. And we're able to pull the cars up that way. See, I've always been told don't do that. Well, if you're pulling on it with a pickup and you get like a running start with it, yeah, you're going to bend or rip a rim off. But if you got slow, steady pressure from a winch cable, you're golden. Damn. That's crazy. The more you know. So I'm just going to put a winch on one of the trucks. Call yeah, it a day. Absolutely. <laughs> Don't take Make any business. But. Yeah. <laughs> Make some money. Yeah. What do you think is the longest like distance that you've had to tow someone? Um, I've done a few tows down to like Rochester. Damn. So that's a haul. Um, I, and also I've gone up to almost like Lake of the Woods. Because that's like how you charge, right? You you charge X amount to get it on there and then X amount per mile? Or what's the standard? Usually these longer tows, it's uh, like roadside services. So they don't pay out of pocket necessarily oh. for it. But if they, yeah, it's a private tow. It's usually like $100, $125 a hookup and then mileage. And nowadays with fuel prices, it's four or five bucks a gallon or four or five bucks a mile. Oh, so, Oof. so that like, adds up, you know, you crazy. get a hundred mile tow, you're paying 500 bucks. That's Damn. crazy. I, I had one tow. It was so like a dumbass. I ran out of gas. My yeah. gas gauge was broken. So I didn't know that's what happened. Like just <laughs> stupid. I thought I was actually broke down. Had a tow truck driver come out, shout out Cavalin Ford. That little tow was like between 150 bucks and 200 bucks just it's about average about five miles Oof. to my house mm-hmm. i couldn't believe it my dad was so mad if only you knew one of the owner's kids that could get you a better deal yeah, yeah. at that point me and me and tk were beefing dude really? they were not buddies oh not good not a good look well hey braxton as a tow truck driver do you think some of these services like AAA are worth it to buy as a Absolutely. normal consumer i would if you even use it once or twice every couple of years, it pays for itself. Really? I think it's like 150 bucks for a year. I'm not going to lie. I kind of expect you to be like, oh, those things are not even worth it. No, I mean, I, from a tow truck driver's point of view, I would say get it if you can. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow, I'm actually really impressed. They'll I gotta, come out. They'll change a flat I mean, for you too. Yeah. Oh, really? I did not yeah, know that. Yeah, you can call them out for a flat. Any triple yeah. A's. Well, that's another thing is we do more than just towing vehicles. We can... Unlock your vehicle when you lock your keys in it. Jump start. We do a lot of jump starts in the winter time too. Yeah, yeah. I suppose. So you just carry on jumper packs with you, or jump how do you packs, do that? or I got cables that come off. Do the you truck. do tire changing? Oh yeah, all? I hate have, them. Have you ever had a guy where you pulled up? Like, let's say it was a guy called you. Sure. And you're looking at this dude like, buddy, you can't change a tire all the time. Like, come all on, the time. It's usually laziness. But I would say that the amount of people that have no idea is pretty high too that that's one thing that blows my mind about you know here in pine city we're not that country like we're we're a little (laughs) rural but you know i never looked at us as some country folk but i would say almost every person i know man or woman can change a tire sure and i grew up in rust city and i could say about the same most people i grew up with so then i go to college and i had a lot of friends that were from the cities and I had to change one of my friend's batteries. I had to change one of my friend's tires. I'm like, did your parents not teach you this shit? I couldn't even. <laughs> yeah. My dad wouldn't let me drive until I could change a tire. So you right. were like the handyman around there. I, and Pretty compared much. to all my friends, I was the dumbass. I don't I don't know how to do anything. But at college, I was like this mechanical god around right. there. Yeah. Like people would be like, oh, you got car problems. Talk to Sam. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, you need a tire changed. I got you. You need got a new car battery? Problems. I'm in. He's the mechanic. He's the mechanic. That's Dude, so it was funny. it was weird. You know, I've oh, never been it. that guy. Oh, I I completely agree with you. We had so many friends in college. Same thing. That was like, 
Oh my god! Someone's <laughs> just gonna choke. Oh my Fuck. god! Don't cut that off. Oof. Yeah. Okay. So we had a lot of friends where it was like, yeah, they just legitimately don't know how to do it. I've never been taught. Never been around it. And it's like, what? How? How? I don't know how that's a thing. But you know, like you said, we just live in an area where you had to know how to do that. Yeah. Definitely. It. it it's weird to think about. It's hard to wrap your <laughs> wrap, wrap your head around. So I. One thing that I was very curious about with with your job is. You know, you see these crazy accidents on 35 or wherever, Highway 70, wherever you might see one. Is that something you'll get called to to come haul a, a car out that's been absolutely totaled or All something the time, like that? Seen cars ripped in half, body parts, dead bodies, a little bit of everything. Is it weird having to hook up to one of these things and there's like blood all over <laughs> the side of the thing? Yeah, a little bit. It's kind of weird knowing that there was a person in there, especially if it's like a fatality crash. Right. That's got to be so eerie. You're just towing this there vehicle. Were, there was this one tow I got sent out to. It was like two or three in the morning. It was supposed to be just a custody tow. Um, show up and there's like fire trucks lined up this road. There's squad cars everywhere. So I'm thinking like this is more than just a regular impound. Get up there, talk to the guys. And they said, well, um, we're going to have you pull this vehicle out of these trees once the ME gets here, medical examiner, because the guy's still in this truck. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So how do those calls go? When they call you, say, we need you out here, do they explain to you, hey, there's a Usually there's a they will, but there's been a few times where I have no idea. I'm just going to tow a car, and I show up, and there's a dead person there. Oh, my God. That's, that's just I could not insane. imagine. Do you, you, you've seen it, it, obviously, yeah. where they're, like, still in the vehicle. You're like, oh, my God. Yeah. Do you remember the first time seeing that? Like, was that a little bit traumatizing where it's like, oh, um, my God, what? Yeah, the first fatality crash I ever went to, I would have been 19 at the time. I uh, get sent up to North of Ogilvy uh, for a crash. It was a vehicle that had supposedly hit a school bus. Dang. I think enough, they didn't say anything more than that. So get up there. It was a school bus that had been stopped on Highway 47, dead stop, letting kids off the school bus, and a van rear-ended the bus at about 65 oh. miles an hour. Oof. God. van went completely underneath it. Um, if you can imagine where the motor should be on the van, that was in the back seat. Whoa. Oh, that's so it horrible. was like the guy was in half. Well, that's the thing. Some of these buses, like people don't understand how reinforced oh. these school buses are because they need to, obviously they're carrying kits. Like yeah, no they, seat belts they, and, on. and it was like yeah. first graders on this bus that witnessed this happen. Oh my god! So these, so they like watch the student yeah. die from the back seat. I'm like, sure the cool kids in the back of the bus suddenly got some trauma. Yeah, oh, dude, they had a story. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, shit, that's crazy. So, what if they? Do you know what they do? Like when this thing happened, do they like pull all the kids off the bus, get them in front, like out away from it? Or I like, think what so. Because do do? by the time I got there, the kids were already all picked up, I'm sure, by their parents. Yeah. But I would think so. Get them out of the, don't let them look at it. Right. Obviously. Oh my God. God, that's wild to me. I cannot imagine being a kid involved in something like that. And like, you're looking at the whole accident, you know, getting flung into the front seat or in the seat in front of you and then looking back and being like, oh, that guy's dead. Yeah. That's wild. Wow. Yeah. I mean, especially at that age, you don't really, you can't really comprehend what happened either. Like at, when I was in first grade, I didn't really understand death by any means, especially something like that. Oh, exactly. Exactly. I couldn't even imagine. Yeah. So watching some of these shows like South Beach Towing. Sure. That's all fake. Do, do, I was just going to ask, yeah. is this, are they... Is this all just show? Yeah. It's all scripted. Reality TV. That's how kind of how I feel about the show Cops, yeah. where it's like, this seems a little too crazy, a little too often. But it is cool, because once I got into towing, then I kind of could see, well, the tow trucks, they're, at, they're using, they do it, or they use the trucks how you normally would, yeah. but it's all set up scenarios. Same with that li lizard lick towing. Yeah. yeah. That's the one I was thinking Fuck of, lizard yeah. lick. I couldn't that, think of the Highway name. Through Hell is a pretty good one. Okay. That's more realistic. What do you think of, like... I don't even know if this is a real thing. Do some of these tow truck drivers like wait in areas like in the cities where they know there's no parking? I've wait heard for of, someone to park, grab it so that they can get that money. Yeah, I've heard of actually tow companies setting up like decoy cars yeah. in no parking spots to so reel that someone in people. Else, I've yeah. heard of that. Yeah. Oh, dude, that's not that's a evil. good business practice. No, it's yeah, not. it does not look good. It's not. Because then you're just the most hated company around town. People that's, know. Yeah, that's when you know the company's desperate for money. There's a lot of money in towing, though. Can there's be. a lot of money in towing, especially down in the cities, because there's so many places where you can't park. And there's I would always going to be people driving. Always. Breaking down. Always. 
So for you as a young buck getting into it when you're 18, what what can somebody coming out of high school that wants to be a tow truck driver, what can they expect to be paid right off the bat? What do you It's I would say it's a very underpaid and underappreciated profession. I would say nowadays starting you're going to be looking at anywhere from 18 to 25. All right, that's not. I mean, I terrible considering what you go through though. It's I, that's it's very. I think it should be much higher, but yeah, I mean, you know, coming out of school, that's a good way to start. Get your get your feet wet a little bit, mm-hmm. and in the blue collar, you know, life like that. And it comes down to the area too. Like you could go go down to the metro and make a little bit better money, but then you're dealing with a whole different crowd of people. Right. Compared to up here, I love it. You know, a lot of it's just listening to podcasts, cruising back county roads. I suppose, yeah. yeah. What so? What do you do when you're not on a call? Like, what is your daily? Like, make sure are you just the, driving around? No, we hang out at the shop. Make sure all the trucks and stuff are cleaned up, and yeah. So there are some slow days, but then there's also days where you're you never just stop. Crazy, yeah. Just not nonstop, go go go. I imagine it changes a lot based on the size of the company, but who's maintaining these? Do you guys have like a mechanic that's just maintaining them, or are you guys maintaining your own vehicles? We do a lot of the maintenance. That we can on our own as far as oil changes, fuel filter changes, stuff like that. But a lot, some of the bigger repairs, yeah, we'll branch it out. Some of the local diesel shops. Yeah, that makes sense. What What happens if somebody doesn't pick up their vehicle from impound? Like, is there a certain amount of yeah. time where you get, like, to go take all their shit? Yeah. Or? So we send out registered letters on vehicles that we impound, and if they don't pick them up after so many days, it's usually 30 or 45, then they become legally ours. <laughs> no way. So, oh, is this where you see a lot of these auctions? Yeah. So, like, um, I know, like, the police auctions. Is that all impounded cars? Usually. Okay. Stuff like forfeitures for DWIs and repeat so, offenders. So now, do you have to bring like these uh, non-insurance repo or non-insurance calls, the repos, the DUIs? Are they going to the police's impound or your impound? Usually the ones like for us that will go to the sheriff's office impound lot are forfeitures, which are repeat offenders with DWIs. Okay. And they can seize the vehicle and then the owner can actually, like you said, buy it back in an auction or they lose their car. Dude, some of these police auctions, you can get vehicles extremely cheap. Absolutely. Are nice you, vehicles, too. Have you, some nice ones. Have you purchased anything out of an auction? I haven't, no. No? But you kind of got the end. We just got bit. my girlfriend a car out of the Impound lot, though, not too long ago. Really? Newer Fusion. Nice. Not a bad That's car. Awesome. Yeah, nice little find. You're going to you're gonna put her in a Ford? Something that's uh, going to break down it's inevitably? Cheap. Yeah, it's cheap. <laughs> it's more work for you at the end of the day. Hey, her, her Chevy Impala she had, that thing made almost 300,000 miles. That's crazy. Hey, I Until will, someone pulled out in front of her and totaled Best vehicle it. of all yeah. time. Oh. I've owned three of them. I fucking love them. <laughs> I, ha- I had one as a kid. Um, I'm at, right now driving a GMC Yukon with 315,000 miles on it right now. Nothing wrong with Chevys. Nothing I love them goddamn Chevys oh. to get wherever you need, brother. <laughs> The lifeblood of the Big American Chevy economy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, that's the thing. What is the employee discount on a on a tow? Like, are you towing your own shit for free? Usually, whenever I've needed towing needs, it's taken care of. Damn, yeah. that's a hell fuel. of a fringe benefit. Put a little fuel in the truck, and yeah, yeah, absolutely. You ever show up to a job or a tow, and it's somebody that you know, and it's like all the this time is awkward. Old old high school teachers, people like that that you haven't seen in years. Yeah. <laughs> oh that's man funny. that's funny have you ever you ever been in a situation where someone wants to like fight you or get physical because you're taking their vehicle away i've never personally dealt with it usually they just get pissed at the cops right yeah okay that makes sense you say you deal with because i just give the them the line of there. it's my job but nothing i can do man right it just it is what it is it's already hooked up i can't yeah. i can't take it off now mm-hmm. but you see and hear about a lot of these tow truck drivers having to like you know, conceal and carry or like have bats in their, in their rigs. Is that a real thing or is that just for show? I wouldn't be opposed to it. I would say that I would recommend it to any tow truck driver. Yeah. Get your conceal and carry. Do you have your carry? I don't yet. Oh, okay. Well, maybe we can get you on something. (laughs) Maybe we can set you up with the class. I've been talking about it now for like years. I need to get it done. It's totally worth it. Yeah. What do you think of some of these states? This isn't really tow tow truck related, but what do you think of some of these states like Minnesota, or not Minnesota, North Dakota, Wisconsin, where there's an open carry over 18? I'm not opposed whatsoever. You think that everyone should be carrying, packing heat 24-7? I wouldn't be opposed. It's not a bad idea. I mean, if it's open carry, like, who who the fuck are we to tell them no? That's a good point. We're a goddamn free country. You're not wrong. I just go back and forth. You know, you get some of these kids who just think they're gangbangers that just like, I don't really want some of these guys <laughs> having the ability to carry a gun. 
It's a good way to put it. I didn't really think of that scenario. That's the only scenario where I'm like, uh, maybe we shouldn't let these guys have them. But other than that, I mean, like, how do you how do you set that up? What do you put in place that's like limiting that? You can't really, right? Yeah, I mean, it just there. all falls on, you know, what what's our freedoms and what's not. I, mean, I guess. Well, whatever. What's what in the tow truck industry? What's like the pay scale look like? Like veterans at the top of the food chain. What are these guys getting paid? Oh, it it, it all depends where you work and what company you work for. And if you own a company, that's okay. a big one. That's what I was just going to ask. Yep. If you own your own tow truck company, is it a pretty lucrative thing? It can be. Absolutely. Yeah. If you run it right and you spend your money and invest it wisely, it can be a huge money maker. How, like, what does a big tow truck company look like? Like, do you know of any places that are running, like, a shit ton of trucks this 24-7? Or, There's like... some pretty big outfits kind of all over. I've heard of a couple companies down south. With the big heavy wreckers, they grossing a couple hundred million a year. Wow. Oh, my gosh. That's crazy. I suppose, though, if you're in a big city, let's use Minneapolis for an example. If you're a prominent tow truck company, like, that's the go-to. I imagine their impound lots are massive. Huge. Huge. Because you're constantly towing vehicles, and some of these vehicles are just not nice, where people are like, I'm not going to pay to get it out. It's not mm-hmm. even it's not even worth 500 bucks. Yeah. You know, so it happens a lot too. I was going to ask is is that a common thing where you just get a lot of junk vehicles yep. that people just leave? Because a lot of the repeat defenders that end up going to jail and getting their shit impounded, uh, they don't care about the vehicle they're driving if it's even theirs. Right. No, that's a good point. So how does it work if let's say somebody's car is in the impound and they have some valuables in there in there that they really need? but they can't afford to get it out oh. of the impound, do you let them go back and grab their shit? Or? That's a gray area. I mean, usually if it is like medications, keys, stuff like that, we're usually good about letting letting them grab it. But when it comes down to electronics, stuff like that, yep. usually we'll hold it. Because otherwise we'll never get paid. Right. Yeah. You, got, you got drivers to pay when you're sending them out there for this stuff. You got trucks. You got insurance. Yeah, a lot of overhead there. A you lot gotta, of overhead. That's you got to get it back. I would. How often is that? Like what what do you think the average time span of someone leaving their car in the impound is? Are they usually I pretty would say quick? They're to pick usually it up? picked up within two to three days. Oh, oh wow. if my car got usually. impounded, I'd be there that day, yeah. dude. Right, yeah. And we I have had that. I've impounded a car at one in the morning and I have a call at two thirty. I need to get my car out. Sorry, it's gotta wait till business hours. You know? Oh no way. Oh yeah. Oh, so someone has to be at the impound lot to be to able to process it. it. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. That's crazy. So What's the legality behind that? Because, like, if they're willing and able to get it, you're just telling them, hey, you just got to wait. Well, yeah, we have our set business hours and impound lot hours. We have to be open for at least two hours, one or two hours per day, I believe. What, what's the actual legality behind that where it's like, I mean, you're holding their property, but, like, they're willing to buy it. They're willing to bring it out. They're willing to get it back. Are you technically holding it from them without Like I said, their the consent? only... Property that we can't legally hold from them is medications. So if well, car seats, not, stuff like yeah. that, you know, if they need to get their car seats out of there, they can grab them. Dang, that's actually crazy. So now I'm just blown away. So if someone is just like, hey, I got this medication, like, are you legally obligated to let them go grab it? If they have medications, yeah. Wow. Yep. That's crazy. And that brings up another topic of people breaking into the impound lot. Because that oh. has happened as well. Do they try to get their vehicle out? Have you ever had someone try to like get, <laughs> jump the fence? Before I was there, they actually had a set of people before they had dogs at our Bram Impulse lot. They jumped the fence, got into their car. Didn't know that the fence when he drove up to it would open. You know, one of those censored ones on the inside. Drove right through it. Oh, wow. They, so obviously the cops know which vehicle it was, who was probably yeah. driving it. Yeah, not, not it the best plan. wasn't very not well thought all. out. No. Wait, so I, I don't want to pass over this you're telling me the whole they actually have dogs in the lot i always we, thought that was just dogs. Show. i thought that was a movie yeah. thing i no, can't believe it's a that. big thing yeah and it, it helps and they they live like in the lot like oh, they're <laughs> they're lot dogs yeah that's fucking awesome they're good boys yeah <laughs> lot dogs god a couple that's german awesome. shepherds really yeah. dude it's just I like the not movies. fucking dare yeah <laughs> Are they vicious to people they don't know? Oh, yeah. If you don't know them, they'll rip your arm off. Oh, man. <laughs> I love that, dude. That's, that's like, just something that I always thought, like, it was cool, but there's no way that's real. Like, that's just 
something to add into the movies. But that you can get into some legal issues nowadays with yeah. that. With like oh, yeah. if if people were to break in and especially they get bit by your dog, it's like. Well, especially Minnesota. I mean, yeah. you, you, we have these laws in Minnesota where it's like if someone breaks in, but they're on their way out, you can't do anything. Yep. So if they're trying to leave, you cannot harm them in any way, shape, or form. Otherwise, you're going to jail. Yeah, and same with city ordinances. That's why we don't have dogs down in Cambridge because oh. you'd have them barking all the time yep. and pissing people off. Oh, that's crazy. That's, all, that's so cool. What are what are some gripes of the towing industry? What are some things that you don't like about being a tow truck operator? Uh, to be honest, I enjoy most of it. The biggest gripe would have to be just the unpredictability of when you were going to have to go yep. out. Getting called out in the middle of the night. I don't mind it because I've, like I said, done it for so long now. But Well, and if you're super tired and you're like, oh, man, I just want to be able to sleep all night. And then you get that call at 2 a.m. That's the worst. But that's the thing, too, is usually if we're out all night, you can, if it's quiet in the mornings, we get to sleep in. So that's nice. You see some snow falling and you're probably like, oh, my God. It's just a matter of time until the phone starts ringing. I'm considering changing my whole career choice. I love the sound of this job. It, it's not a bad gig to get into. I kind of want to just pick up a tow truck just so I can <laughs> yeah. tow my friend's vehicle. Yeah, you guys ever get ride-alongs? Can I come do a ride-along? Yeah, That'd absolutely. Be a good time. Have you sign off? Oh, that'd be man, sweet, actually. <laughs> Maybe we make a... Dude, that'd be a great little video, like, day in the life make of a, a tow truck vlog, driver. Dude. <laughs> yeah, because I, you have a drone, don't you? I do, yeah. Because I actually bought a drone last year because I wanted to get into some of that with yeah. the towing stuff, but when I'm out on a crafting, scene, I yeah. don't have time to be flying a drone around. Yeah, that's a good point. That's you know? a good point. Hey, I am Part 107 certified. I'm insured, so, you know, we go. hit your boy up. Yeah, because we get some <laughs> awesome crash scenes, you know, shut down oh, the road, it. shut down the highway, get some good video. That's crazy. You ever um you ever move anyone's vehicle just for fun? You see your buddy's thing out there, you're like, oh, done a couple pranks like that, yeah. <laughs> move it to the other side of the parking lot. That's but then do you also like you guys were talking about earlier, the amount of people that you haven't talked to in let's say five plus years and all of a sudden your phone rings and it's that person because they know you I need drive a, a tow truck. Hey man, I broke down. Yeah. Happens all the time. Oh, I believe that. How do you how do you handle that? Are you usually the the guy that goes for it like all right man i remember you from six years ago or i usually like, just eh. watch the phone ring because i know what it's for 99 percent of the time like yeah I can come get you but it's gonna cost <laughs> yeah that too it's like if you support someone and what they do you're gonna you want to pay the full price you don't want to be asking for discounts all the time <laughs> right Definitely. right that's another thing He's gonna be. He's gonna get a, a Facebook Messenger call from the on tap account. And he's just gonna <laughs> let it ring. <laughs> it's like, yeah, they just need a toll. just no three inches. I'm not answering that one. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think is the best part about being a tow truck driver? What's like? What's the one thing that keeps you coming back? Where it's like, I love doing this. I would say it's uh, either the meeting or n- everything being different. No day is the same. And then also working with law enforcement, because that would have been my second career choice if I didn't get into the towing, would have been law enforcement. That's true. Can you grow a good mustache? Uh, easily. Nice. I shave every day, though. So Nice. Now, now you have cop buddies, Clean too. Cut. You know, right. oh, That's never a bad that. thing. Yeah, I've oh, met man. a lot of really cool guys on the forces, and I know they always get a bad rap, of, you know, bad cops, this and that. A lot of really, really good guys out there that do a lot of things to help people. <laughs> Well, it just goes back to it takes one person to ruin it for everyone. For you know? sure. Yeah. It's, it's really I've, like that. I've minority. met my fair share of bad, bad cops, as you would say, but. Well, and just, you know, it's a tough job, too, because you could. Everybody has days where they're having a bad day in a bad mood. And it's tough because you always have to be professional. You know, you can't just take your personal issues out on somebody by, like, giving some soccer mom a ticket just because you feel like it. Or, right. You know, just taking advantage of it. It's For just, sure. It's just like teachers. That's that's one thing that always bothered me is like when I would notice a power tripping teacher and it's like, man, you, you can't just come to work with that. You you have to be professional every single day. And that's a lot of pressure in its own. Right. Makes makes me happy. That's I don't too, have because to. Because I've always, I remember the stigma growing <laughs> up of tow truck drivers. You're just your big, greasy, dirty guys. Dude, and that's exactly what I think. That's yeah. Like, and, and that's I've not tried, the case. No, I've tried kind of coming off of the whole different rap sheet of that. I get, you know, like you said, clean cut, haircut all the time. Yep. Just, and people are amazed. They go, you, you'd be surprised the last tow truck I drove in. That guy was fucking nasty. <laughs> <laughs> that truck was so goddamn dirty. We've talked about this in previous episodes, and I, I know this is the case with you guys. Do you 
purposely try to keep your trucks clean? Like that's your, basically your office. Is this, yeah. is this a sanctuary? We're, you're in it every day, all day. Absolutely. Do keep you, the trucks clean. Oh, absolutely. Do you get guys that's like your, your, your tow truck shoes or are you just wearing the same shoes? To be honest, I rock the Etnies almost every day at work. Etnies. I wear Etnies, yeah. Really? Are you wearing them right now? Oh, my. You got a pair on, yeah. Oh, dude, this is electric. I feel like I'm <laughs> transported back to 2006. That's what I get a lot, yeah. <laughs> They're one of the most comfortable shoes on the they market. They hold up so much better than DCs. <laughs> the DCs. Yeah. Dude, this is just a throwback right now. Hey, it's a matter of time before the tow truck drivers are going to start showing up in Osiris's. Uh, I'm not, never was a fan of Osiris. Oh, come on, dude. You got to get on the Osiris that episode. Oh, uh, that's funny. Well, hey, Braxton, man, that's about all the time that we have for the Blue Collar Happy Hour episode here with Tow Truck Operator. Is there anything that you want to plug here before we end this thing up? Um, I mean, honestly, if you guys want to check out my TikTok or my YouTube channel. It's yeah, where can they find you? Braxton Wolf. W-O-L-F. Hell yeah. Go subscribe to the boy. Oh yeah, good content. I was I did a deep Appreciate dive it. in it yesterday, so I recommend it 100%. Appreciate yeah. that. Hell yeah, thanks for coming on, dude. Thank you guys.